and I believe collectively as a group we're going to kick the competition's butt because we understand how important it is to think, execute, and dominate. And rituals. Having hot food is about habits and rituals. Great customer service is about habits and rituals. Being the best in the world at what you do, being a pro, is all about habits and rituals. Let me tell you something. I learned there are always four students on the brochure. Two white, one Asian, and one African American every single time. And sometimes they would substitute the Asian for a Latino. And as I collected more brochures, I began to recognize some of the same kids on different schools' brochures. <laughs> and then I realized, you know what? Oh my God, these aren't students, these are models, and this is big business. Your industry is big business, and whenever you have big business, it's very competitive. But in basketball, if you win by one, you still win. If you win by one, you still win. So when you want to compete at a high level in a very competitive business, you better pay attention to every little detail. Sometimes in franchise systems, when the leader talks about what we need to do, some of you sit there and say, oh, we don't need to do that. I'm not doing that. It doesn't take all that. It don't need to do that. I don't take all that. Some of you guys right now in the opening keynote had that thought going to your mind. Oh, I'm not doing that. I don't need new plates. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. You already made up your mind not to do it. Great people, pay attention to detail. So at this conference, don't you dare let your mind say, oh, I'm not doing that, don't take all that, I'm not doing that, didn't take all that, and I'm not. you'll be average the rest of your life. Great people pay attention to every single little detail. I used to think that way, it doesn't take all that, but you know what, in my basketball career, I played three years and I should have had a longer career because I did not pay attention to detail. I'm kicking my competitions, but mainly because I cut off the news and I understand my success is based on my daily habits. The first day of high school, I walked in full of confidence. I believe confidence is arrogance under control. I walked in my first day of high school full of confidence until I passed the principal's office. And he was 6'6", 240 pounds. Everybody else called him Mr. Bond, but I called him Dad. That first day of school was the longest day of my life. I attended high school in Chicago's inner city where my father was a principal of my high school. I got to the lunchroom and I ate lunch all by myself. I could hear my classmates whisper, that's the principal, son, that's the principal, son. Where? Right there. I couldn't wait to get home. I made up my mind, when I get home, I'm gonna throw a pity party. Go ahead and cry, feel sorry for yourself. Be angry, be frustrated, but I only give you three days. I went home that first day of school and I threw me a three-day pity party. You guys don't know me, but I know how to party. Peak performers always think positively. So go ahead and throw your pity party for three days and that's it. Every other thought after that third day, make sure it's positive. If you see you or feel yourself thinking negatively, stop it right then. And reprogram your mind to think positive. I'll give you three days. Go ahead and do it. I do it myself all the time. But I threw that three-day pity party and I came up with a plan. I'm going back to high school. I'll be starting a baseball team, basketball team, football team, president of my journalism club. My classmates are going to vote me most likely to succeed. Four years later, after my pity party, I got focused. When I was an immature basketball player, I didn't get that concept. I had another teammate named Carl Malone, who arguably had the best body in the history of the NBA. I would go to restaurants with him, and he annoyed me. I couldn't even imagine what the waitress felt like. He annoyed me. Now, he had the best body of all time in the NBA, but he annoyed me at restaurants. He would order grilled chicken Caesar salads, and he would ask the waitress, when you grill my chicken Caesar salad, can you make sure there's no char marks on my chicken breast? Uh, you want her to levitate the chicken over the grill? I mean, what do you want her to... <laughs> very picky, very meticulous with Walter Charmerks have carcinogens. Carcinogens create cancer. I want the chicken breast, but I don't want the cancer. 
Another time he ordered a chicken salad. This man was 6'9", 256 pounds. He always ate salads and I rarely saw him clear his plate. Had the best body of all time in the NBA. He ordered a chicken salad one time. It came with hard boiled eggs. The salad came out. He says, I don't want hard boiled eggs. They're high in cholesterol. And we're in Salt Lake City. They all know who we are. We're the only brothers in town. Well, Mr. Malone, the salads are pre-made and the egg is crumbled over the salad. Well, would you mind picking it out for me? He annoyed me. I would go behind his back. I would apologize to the waitress and give her an extra tip. Me? I ate whatever they brought me. French fries? Cool. Gravy? Cool. This the wrong order. I'll keep this and I'll eat the other food you bring out too. He annoyed me when he ordered food because I thought he was difficult. Carl Malone played 20 years in the NBA. I played three. I actually have motivational speakers calling me, saying, Walter, we're in a recession. I'm thinking about quitting and getting a real job. Now, isn't that an oxymoron? A motivational speaker quitting. You know what I do when I get those phone calls? I motivate them to quit. Because <laughs> in my mind, if it's going to be a dog-eat-dog -dog world, I'm going to be the big dog. And I always ask them a question, because they say, you know, Walter, the economy, the recession, the economy, the recession. I don't trust the media. I was a high school basketball star. I began to deal with the media when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. I understand how... <laughs> yeah, corporate. <laughs> I make what they make.